Greetings, family. This is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to our Black Star Pan African Community Meeting. And this is more of one of our um, emergency meetings where we just literally just talk directly about specific situations. Uh, so tonight, uh, on this uh, August or this afternoon, on this uh, August thirteenth, uh, we're gonna get into talking about um, more and more people are moving and looking to build on the uh, fifteen acres as all 50 surveys have been completed. And so now everyone that's interested in building can uh, have their paperwork to build. And the next thing that we'll work on, which is why we have a new lawyer and a new consultant uh, to help us uh, with our deed of assignment, which will turn into our titles and deed paperwork. And uh, the, the attorney will work with the Lands Commission and our consultant, Mohammed. Uh, go ahead. Let me put you. All right, I thought somebody was saying something. So, our new attorney is going to work with us to uh, get the next phase of things completed, which is our title and our deed. I want to make sure that uh, we can get that, but everything has to be registered through the Lands Commission since it's quote unquote vested land, which is what came back from all of the land search, uh, which is fine and which is also a better situation. I'm realizing more in Ghana, it's um, it's easier to deal with vested land or government land. Uh, when we have chiefs involved in things, it gets a little complicated and things like that. So uh, these are things that uh, we learn to move around with, but not all land are government land. Some are vested land, some are literally um, just uh, chief and sea land. And then you also have freehold land. Uh, so that's the situation that we're in. So I want to spend the next uh, few months working with our new attorney to get these things done. But at the same time, too, while I'm working on those things, and again, I went through this uh, like two years of just from pressure on the survey and the consultant so everyone can have their surveys. So right now, everyone have their surveys to where when they look at the scope of their land, they can use that to talk with their builder or to just organize a building plan. So I want to make sure everyone is at least in that motion. That's the, the main stage. Now, uh, since we're talking about building, uh, the concerns have always been the fact that, okay, we have land and from the main road in Jahadzi, getting to the land, uh, during the time of the rainy season, the roads are just washed out or messy. So different people who are building have used different methods, including building during the dry, dry season or going to the back way and things like that. But eventually we're gonna have to figure out, um, and the, the main thing about it is we're not the only set of people there uh, so we want to make sure whatever roads that we put in, it doesn't affect anybody else's land and it doesn't cause issues. So it's one of those things where Azibo has been talking to uh, Nana Haiti and Nana Haiti have given clearance on certain things. But we still need to make sure that the, the, the project is organized before we start having bulldozers, just bulldozing roads and then just trying to lay uh, tires. Uh, so it has to be a lot, lot more organized than that. And um, I'm hoping that uh, different people can add different energy on exactly how we can get it done and how we can do it. Uh, so open for all of those um, things as far as the research and for those that are physically in Ghana, um, you know, you can always be one of the main people there that's helping us organize uh, this project to get it done. And people like myself here, our goal has to be to where we can work out the funding as far as getting grants, trying to talk to people who can, um, assist us on how we can uh, do these things. Uh, so it's one of those things where we need uh, different minds on different uh, projects. Um, and when we don't have a lot of minds on it, then we just you know do as much as we can get done. But we, you know, we're at a point now where we need to start getting a lot more done. So uh, Baba Zibo, before you get into talking about the mechanical concrete, um, uh, Brother Harry, um, uh, you and I talked this morning, you and I have talked before. I just want you to share your, your direct concerns about all the things that you mentioned. And then, you know, you know, you can ask the same thing, like, what is our game plan? And that's when I'll get Azibo to share some information and then we could just uh, dialogue. So Harry, uh, you're up. I uh, just want you to share about your concern of, as far as you're trying to move and build and then you're wondering what's going to happen with the roads. If you're going to be able to access it or you're building, you're moving, moving around and things like that. Uh, 
Aria, whenever you're ready, just unmute yourself and give us uh, your feedback because you've been there lately on the uh, land and you, you actually came right to the land when it was in our worst uh, time frame, which is our rainy season. So Zebra, I would say that um, I guess around July, August, September, August, June, July, August, those three months are heavier rains, right? Uh, let me uh, unmute you. You have to make sure you unmute. Yeah, we're, we're, we're about at the end of the rainy season now. This uh, to July, August. So, uh, so the timing is perfect, really. You know, we, we're not getting a whole lot of rain right now. Um, I think, uh, the rainy season should should be completely over around uh, sub September. Is that September? September uh, around September November to start getting into the dry season. All right, cool. So that is your phone making all this clicking noise, all right? Oh right, yeah. So uh, the dry uh, the rainy season anywhere from uh, June to. Uh, September, basically. Uh, so, and um, that's um, basically the middle of summertime where people will want to go to Ghana and build. So that's what um, more and more of us are realizing that it's days where it rains a lot and you can't really get to the property. So this is where um, Aziba wanted you to share about uh, your concept, your ideas, um, as far as us are resolving that situation during the rainy season. And then the rest of us can build on to what we can do to make this work because uh, these are all group projects and um, I'm open to committing as much of my time to work on certain things, but some things I just have to stay focused on and other things we really need other people to do research. Yeah, um, I, th I think that the, the, uh, the, the main thing is to uh, just to get, uh, we need to, we need to get, uh, we need to get the trucks. We need to get the uh, earth mover, which is uh, heavy equipment. Um, uh, we need to uh, get the uh, materials that, that's needed is the uh, tires. The prob probably it's just uh, 15 uh, per square per square foot. Uh, 15, 15 square feet, you got uh, 30 some tires per, per square foot. Um, and, uh, we, we found, uh, a person that, that's willing to sell us tires for, for two CDs each. These are used tires and, um, you know, they, they, they've never heard of uh, mechanical concrete and I, I would like to speak on it. Uh, mechanical concrete is, uh, is a technical, uh, uh, way of in uh, in a very inexpensive way of building a very very uh, durable and a, a very uh, long lasting uh, road. But most of the roads here, after a period of time, they got heavy machinery. Uh, they get they get potholes. Um, the mechanical concrete uh, technique and technology. It doesn't. It doesn't even make. It doesn't make potholes. Um, the, the technique is is to cut the walls out of the tires, fill the tires with sand and stone, and then uh, top it off with uh, maybe a, a clay or or a clay material or a, um, asphalt material. Asphalt is very expensive, but uh, you can you you can either use asphalt or cement. Uh, a mixture of cement and uh, sand, um, and uh, it's a it's a it's a very ex inexpensive way of building a very doable and long lasting road. Um, I, I spoke on the uh, heavy equipment. We 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 uh, price the uh, truck, the truck um, that's going to haul the sand, the tires. And the uh, the stones, uh, 
gravel stones. Um, we have a, a, a labor crew, a crew of uh, about six people. And uh, they, they will be paid in, in CDs. Uh, and uh, what the, uh, the length of uh, the road would be uh, less less than a quarter of a mile. It's from from um, Winnabar Winnabar uh, uh, Highway to uh, to the uh, to the uh, site to the the, the uh, Black Black Star Building site. Um, part of, like I said, part of the presentation is uh, dealing with uh, me and Dr. Cassandra put together a video concerning uh, the uh, project that we want to do. Uh, we we have the prices, we have the uh, people for the labor, we have, uh, we are in contact with the uh, trucks, the uh, truck that we, we might need, heavy equipment truck, and uh, the earth mover, which is uh, heavy equipment uh, to plow the uh, debris and stuff out the way to, to create, to actually create the road. The only the only difficult part to this project would be um, the low the low lying area on the way to the uh, development site to the uh, Black Star uh, gate security gate. Um, this 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 uh this 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 area is uh is prone to uh, where water would would be able to settle. So we what we did is we I did research on the uh, concrete tubes. That's the only thing that I don't I don't have a price for is the uh, concrete tubes. The uh, cement concrete tube we need about four or five of them to uh, to put to in incorporate those tubes in the development of the road itself. And the uh, the uh, mechanical concrete, the uh, tires and the technology would go over these tubes. That would allow the water to uh, go back and forth through the, uh, it would, it, the road would not block the water. The water would go back and forth during the rainy season. It, it would keep the uh, road from, from uh, literally being uh, washed out by the, uh, by the uh, water and the, uh, the uh, rain. So uh, uh, um, uh, we we got we 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 have a, a all we need is the funding and and, and the uh, and the price for the tubes. But we got we got the uh, the numbers to everything else. So that's basically uh, it, you know. That's part of that. That's basically what what it is. It's part of uh, what I want to say about the uh, presentation. Any uh, questions? Uh, any anybody have anything to say? All right, Azibo, appreciate it. Uh, what I want to do is uh, I want to play a video. Uh, so to give everybody more of a visual, so let me just do that um, right now. Mechanical concrete. A few years ago, American civil engineer Samuel Bonasso came up with a fundamentally new road construction technology. In 2016, the American Society of Civil Engineers recognized it as the most environmentally friendly construction method, and here's why. The problem of tire recycling in the modern world is very serious. Annually, every major city produces about 90,000 tons of geometric tires. Besides, each of them decomposes in the ground for more than 100 years. Mankind is constantly searching for solutions to give the long a second life and prevent environmental pollution. Mechanical concrete is one of them. Geo-grid is one of the most construction. Usually it's a 2 by 
three-dimensional or three-dimensional honeycomb structure filled with a loose material such as crushed stone. Geogrid increases the bearing capacity of loose and heterogeneous soils, securing rough bases. The technology of mechanical parts implies the use of worn-out car tires instead of geogrids. They are placed on the prepared soil tightly against each other, and they are fastened together. Builders fill each tire cavity with crushed stone and then lay asphalt at the top. It's noteworthy that approximately 15 tires are used for one cubic meter of mechanical concrete. The resulting design is inexpensive. This technology uses 50% less building materials compared to traditional methods. The cost of maintenance is also reduced, as the coating has increased strength and durability. The road can withstand loads of up to 150 tons per square meter. And this is another video. What are you up to? Hey, well, I thought it was an important time to do a little bit of an update. So, you know, we've been collecting tires. Not for a long period of time. In fact, we we had these tires for, I think they were on the property for less than 24 hours. Um, this particular batch, all the other ones were pretty much broken down. Um, for somebody decided to drive by and port us to the State Department of Environmental Preservation, I believe it is. Uh, to enforcement bureau that enforces uh, environment protection laws, like burying tires. Uh, and tires are usually considered thumbs to the property. What I do is I grab my, press the reciprocating saw, um, and I bring it over to a staging area where I start cutting the line wall off. Well, and then after I'm done with that, you end up with two things. You end up with these tire derived chemically inert cylinders. Yes, it's a technical term, which an engineer uh, used to explain what a tire post recycling is conserved, is considered. Now, the sidewalls, uh, which are a leftover part, will either need to be paid for to be disposed of or recycled or. Uh, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll actually chip them up um, and they'll become components to playground mats, et cetera. Um, and we'll figure that part out. We're willing to pay that fee in order to put this many pieces of, uh, of used uh, materials to work, to keep our driveway uh, resilient and durable throughout the years. And I mean, do you want to see tires stockpiled on the side of the road until we can afford to have them taken care of? Or would you rather see them turn into a roadway that has already proven its success? Um, it doesn't even have its top cap on yet. Uh, that, that's an upper layer of gravel that's going to be somewhat compacted. And it is a solid, durable driveway. Overall, I think by my current estimates, we'll be in the neighborhood of uh, 250 to 300 tires to complete this, this section of driveway which at that point, we're gonna be out of the mucky, muddy, you know, really rough areas to work in. So we might be able to just change course and do gravel or dirt, you know, from most other points up, especially if we end up in a, you know, um, in a situation with the state where we need to prove the viability of something, um, despite the overwhelming lack of evidence from people who know way more about this than me, and possibly more about it than their enforcement officers. Um, we are not burying tires. We are not disposing of tires. We are using uh, uh, a, a product that is no longer needed to recycle it into a usable product, leaving a significantly lower amount of waste to be removed from the site and a durable, long-lasting driveway that will prevent us from having to asphalt using toxic chemicals, um, or, um, you know, to uh, constantly have a piece of equipment out here grading our driveway on a regular basis, uh, which is a big expense in time and, of course, cash as well. So, anyway, a little bit of something that's been going on. Um, and
and uh, we will probably have many, many updates going forward. So we've got this gravel. We're getting two more loads of gravel today because we want to go all the way up there. Um, we are facing facing eviction, so um, we need to we need to get out of here. We need to get building. Uh, what was going to be a yeah sure let's try to get out here as soon as we can thing is now a we need to get out of here as soon as we can. So um, building starts in full earnest now. And the results are in, huh? the internet. Kubota time. How's it going? Good. Uh, we're getting two loads today, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. One at a time. Work that is nothing like shoveling gravel to remind you just how old and tired you can be sometimes. Native plum. We'll see how it does. And it makes a there's a little shrew that lives down here. I'm gonna make him very, very nervous. This is like his highway. He runs all the way down and through there to get water and then comes back up. He's gonna come through in a little bit and be like, um, excuse me, ma'am. I guess we'll call the all right, Azibo. So, uh, those are two visuals just wanted to share. Um, is that the concept of how you see it being done on the land? Because we have to, we'd have to go deep to where you can. You know, to where you can create a, a barrier. So that's our uh, raw footage right there. Um, but I uh, wanted to hear from Harry. Um, uh, Harry, let me know if you're available. So uh, yeah, I'm about, Just wanted you to talk about your concerns as far as you building and um, the conditions okay. of the roads. And then wanted to find out from you if this is something that you see visually that could be done uh, to connect the main road that goes through Jihadzi to uh, Black Star. Well, I have a lot of concerns about that being done. First of all, none of us has ever done it. So since none of us has ever done it, then we don't know the full mechanics behind how to do it. I mean, I've done construction for 15 years, so I know when you see stuff on videos, that's the that's the good side of it. They don't show you the other side of the video. And normally when you when, when you don't know the full mechanics of everything, you end up sinking money into things and it becomes a ongoing pile of sinking. It never really gets done what you really want to get done. And even if the concept is sound, I want to look at the steps it would take to actually get this done. So 
first thing we would have to look at, of course, we would have to talk about digging the, down, the, uh, the ground down and getting a level ground where the tires will actually fit and then you will have your walls on either side of the tires. One, we gonna need an engineer to come look at the, the, le the water run levels, which way the water run, the way the land is running. What will happen when we re-divert the water? Which way would the water go? And we also would need someone to actually do the work so that if something ain't right, then we have somebody to say, you got to come back and fix this, period. We want to have guarantees on putting, because all of us are put. none of us have the money to just throw out there. And then if it not, if it not go well, to say, okay, oh, well, we tried, it's all good. None of us have that type of money. So we need someone that's going to be out there to actually do the work that we could say, hey, this ain't right. You need to get it done right. And I don't believe any of us have actually built roads before either. I mean, well, I've done it, but I haven't done it in years. So there's a lot to doing this and just mapping out. Do we just do, do we do the entire road or should we do sections? Should we do sections where we see there's a dip in the road? How would that work? How would it work whereas though we got dips in the road that goes down the level of the, the drop is deeper than the actual elevation? There are a lot of there are a lot of unknowns. So I'm not saying this cannot get done. What I'm saying is if we're looking to try to get a road in now, or we're looking to try to just have a road. what will be the value of having just a role based until we can get a mechanical role or some, a role that works based on until we can get all the finance or everything we need to do this mechanical role. Because from my understanding, it sounds like one, we don't have the expertise, we don't have the equipment, we don't have the finances, and we don't have all the costs yet. So three of those is major. The expertise, the funds, and what did I say? And knowing how much it costs. Right. And all those are, are essential to doing this because as each of us pile money into this and all of us that are building back there, I mean, I don't know how many are back there building, but it's enough of us where that we should be able to get together, put funds together in a one-time shot and get something done to where as though it will make that work, that role workable. Because we may not have a mechanical role yet. We may not have all the money or all the expertise or all the equipment to do the mechanical work, but we can make what we have work. until we can get the mechanical road in, no matter if we got to do a piece by little piece by little piece by little piece. So those are my concerns. And I would like to understand, I mean, there is, we could easily get and say, yes, it's easy to do it this way. It's easy to do it that way. But if you actually start thinking about how a road is built and we all start just throwing ideas out, we would see that, there's a lot more to it than just it could easily be done. So those are my concerns. And I would really like to sit down and mind map this out to where everybody has an idea on exact because if we just think about how, how good this role can be, then we are missing the, the, the road to get to getting that road in. I mean, Azebo walked that road. I've drove that road. All of us have been on that road. And all of us know how that road is. We know the dips. We know the turns. We know all that. And we know it's not going to be as simple 
is just going there, digging it out, putting the tires in, and and getting people in there that actually know how to do it, training them to do it, and getting because even training, you're gonna have a barrier. There's a language barrier. There's a cultural barrier. There's a, 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 a who want to go to work and do the work barrier. There's a lot of barriers there. So we don't want to have us out there managing individual construction people doing stuff. So that's one thing we don't want to do. Next, we don't want to have an actual construction company that we can go to and go to one person and say, why is this not getting done? Because we try to run that ourselves. Each of us got other things we're trying to do. Zebo has the restaurant he's doing, and he has his other business with the Black Star community he has to do. So I can't, Zebo ain't got time to be out there laying out foundations or laying out uh, grading the ground or how deep the, the ground go. We need to cut the ground in order to lay tires in or making sure that everything is level or the road is, Zebo ain't got time for that. I don't have time for that because I have a completely whole business I'm running myself. So we need somebody that we can go to and say, why is this not getting done? And if it's not getting done, can hold responsibility of it not getting done. So it's either say, yes, we can get this, we can get that, and we can throw this out there. But then in the end, who's going to be responsible for it? Who's going to be responsible if things go wrong and next thing you know, we come back next season and all our equipment, all our rocks, stones, tires has been washed down the road. So those are my concerns. And I would like to, you know, see if you, you know, I have anybody have any, uh, you know, ways to address some of these things. Because these are some of the things that I brought out to Azebo, And we are trying to find some answers to those things. We've already had this conversation before we had talked. And we're trying to find answers to some of these things because I'm not going to be the only one ask these questions. Everybody in the community that had, you know, we're going to be asking to fork over money to build this role so they have access to their house is going to ask the same questions. And if they don't ask the questions, then they're not really serious about being back there or they got so much money they don't really care. <laughs> so those questions has to be asked. I uh, appreciate uh, you, Harry. Uh, that's uh, great concerns. And uh, yes, uh, the way we can take this project is the number one thing that we can always do um, with the people that are building is uh, to talk with our builders. So we do have a few builders and um, and, you know, we just have to get them involved in what we're doing. But ultimately, what we need is a good contractor with experience that can give us certain prices and have a team of people. So that is um, easier said than done. So that's what we have um, to do. And I'm hoping that those of us that are there can help us do some field research with some people. And I'll talk to our consultants also. Uh, but we have not been able to get anyone to put anything together on paper, like a real presentation. To where we can develop it. So I was checking with Aziba if you put anything well, together, but go ahead. Women actually should be um I forgot to let you know Azebo. I spoke to um the gentleman Isaac and he's gonna come up um with a few people that does road work and he's the one that's doing my house and um from the people that I've spoke to that you know recommended him from um Bomani and other people that he's done work for they say he's he's good he's a good guy so far he's been proven to do well by me he said he know a couple good people that would come through and you know take a look and give us some numbers and things like that and you know we could go work off of that um as far as a presentation i could put a presentation together um i just need all the numbers I need all the numbers, I need all the information, and I need options. We need to have more than just one option. Because if if it's all or nothing, then sometimes we get nothing. You, you understand what I'm saying? So that's, you know, but if we have another option to say, okay, we could do this little bit now, and then we can move towards this later. 
then I think that could be a better feed on getting funds to actually get it done. Because when people, you know, I'm, I've been out there, so I've seen the work y'all have done. So, you know, I've actually been there. So I've seen what y'all have done. I've seen how the land was at one point in time, and then I came back the next time, and y'all had dozed out a whole side area, dug in rows. I've seen it. So to be able to show others exactly what's being done in a quick pace, okay, you can get into your what's name now. We got a workable road. It's not the mechanical role we want. We are working towards that. But you got a workable role, and we have some lights out there so you can drop up and down the road. Because that's what made me think about that the other day. A Zebo said to me, we need lights out there. And I said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know, we do need lights out there. So can we actually afford to jump into a full mechanical role and throw lights out there? That's self-sufficient solar panel lights at the same time. So these are questions that me and um, Azio has been throwing back and forth at each other because critical thinking gets things done. Yes. So, yeah, I just wanted to, uh, I forgot to uh, let Azio know that I did that. So I told him the other day I was going to speak to a few people. Is Azio still there? I've been trying to get him on. Um, come, uh, Greens Kamal, welcome to the call, Kamal. Um, let me know if you have anything to share because um, you're back there building also. Uh, so as far as what you, you're saying, Harry, I'm with you on that. Um, and uh, Kamal, we can also talk to uh, Welbeck. Uh, that's another builder. Uh, so with our builders, yeah, we should be able to put something together, but uh, we just have to, someone has to lead the project. So Zebra volunteered to uh, to lead the project, but I don't know if you have anything down on paper, but that's what we'd really need uh, when you're trying to even submit for grants and things like that. You know, they want you to have a whole in-depth, uh, detailed business plan. So that's not an easy route either. Uh, so, but yeah, we can start with uh, talking with Isaac and also Welbeck and um, they can get more of their people involved. And But we'd have to put together the organized plan of... Um, or proposal as far as that. if we're going to use mechanical concrete, how does it work and put things together? So it seemed like a typing presentation that I would have to put together uh, based on whatever I can get from everyone. Um, that way uh, it at least uh, gets going. And um, so anybody want to uh, add into the input as far as um, us putting that proposal together, that would definitely uh, help uh, because everything has to just be put in writing. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, I'm not sure what happened to Azebo, but we have a few other people on the call, so definitely want to hear back from other people on their um, thoughts as far as road construction. Because what we have done uh, initially at the beginning is all the roads that you see that's literally in the community, those are just um, dirt roads that's created by bulldozers. At one point, it looked real, it looked nicer than what it looked. It just, I have not been able to keep up with the overgrowth because it's always best if we clear land, we clear it with a bulldozer. But the issue that I've had with the bulldozer people is a level of price gouging to where it's just a little bit just painful. Uh, so people are still thinking that just because a group of uh, black people from African diaspora that uh, we're all rich. So the quotes haven't been good. So I really have to get our consultants involved into this finding some, some good people. So from bulldozer to tires to gravel, to this, an initial this dirt road with bulldozer is a good start. Uh, so I'm gonna do my best to put something together on paper and just uh, write it out based on what, uh, based on the feedback I've gotten from other people. But we'd like for more of us to work in that energy as far as just putting things together in detailed presentation, not only because we can share it with the group members and get them more involved, but uh, to initially this, connect the people that are helping us so that they're clear about uh, what we're working with, what we're looking to do and what we need. Uh, so unfortunately, I don't have all the answers for those things. And even the solar lights, I've gotten quotes, but when you add the math up, it's a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, so that's well, something uh, that we have to figure out. We, Go ahead. 
I want to know, uh, because we never even heard what the price. That's what where we're at at a loss for because we don't even know what was the final number that was discovered on anything. Yeah, because we you haven't had somebody so, to completely yeah. come out and survey it and okay the amount of tires. So we need that done. So, so uh, we need that yes. done. Yes, so we do need uh, okay. one of our I'll start working. A few of our builders to to go out there and survey the situation along with um along with Azebo and Nana Haiti uh because uh, the chief Nana Haiti um that were, that was one of the main concerns from the beginning, and um it was always his uh, confirmation that uh whatever road that we need to build we'll make sure that it doesn't interfere with what other people are doing there on the land because the worst thing is to cross over other people land boundaries and borders, and then now we have issues with other people so. It was always something that was never really clear about how to get it done unless um, we have all the parties involved, uh, which Azebo is right there on the ground, uh, Nana Haiti and his, um, you know, and his, uh, and his, uh, you know, and, and his family that uh, runs the land and uh, some professionals. So that's one we could, that's what we can right. honestly uh, start with. And, and it's good that Isis has, uh, yeah, of Isaac has volunteered. According to um Azebo, he said that um Garvey Road, uh Garvey Road was um approved by the chief, by Chief not by the yeah, by the chief. The chief, right? Yeah, uh, by yes, the chief. Uh, yes, they by, by the chief. That was approved. Yeah, it was approved. So um But yeah, in order for things I'll, to really be approved, you really have to have things on paper. So that's what I was trying to get him to all right, well, I'll start following up on some because I'll be going back and forth out there because, like, my, my house just started getting built. I mean, they just broke ground like a week ago, and I was just there. So, I mean, I'm, I live here now, so I'll be moving back and forth to uh, the back to Winterbar. I'm in Accra, so I live here. So I'm be moving back and forth so that there are things I can get done now on the ground that now I'm here. So just whatever stuff we need to get start getting done, let me know. Stay in contact with me because I, I've already set up with a Zebo that we should have a meeting weekly on what needs to get done and things that I found out and things he can let me know and help me out with. So that way we can get things done together. Uh, so, yes, and now we yeah. can just have uh, even these short meetings um, and then mm -hmm. those who want to participate join and um family it's 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 a lot of things that need to be done so you know okay. we have to put our best minds together to uh do more of the research uh so that's um that's a good start uh with our builders and uh like i said i'm here so you you can use that how you will because i'm here all right the perfect and uh, we have a few other people on. Kamal, uh, you're on. Appreciate you joining the call. Um, let me know if you can unmute yourself and let me know if you can just uh, give us some feedback because uh, your house is built. It looked nice. And just wanted to hear from you yourself as far as your struggles of getting access to get back there as of lately. Because what I've heard is uh, on the other side of the community, that portion is limited for us to move around now. All right, so... All right, Kamal, yours is not unmuting. All right, uh, Celia, I see that you're in the uh, call. Uh, thank you for joining. I want to know if you have anything to share or if you want to participate with us in doing this research because we do have to put together a proposal, nice and typed up, organized, which I can initiate, but I need some assistance with uh, information being sent, and I can just modify it because I have a lot of proposals and presentations uh, from this, the Africa Tourism Investment in general and Black Star. But um, it's nothing is ever organized enough, so we can always use different parts of the proposals that we have had before, and just make it something nice and neat. So that way, we know we are we know what we're working with, and we just not just uh, talking in theory and science. Um, so, and it's just like all of the um, the black star paperwork that was generated and created. So it's the same concept to just have something organized where we can sell to ourselves and also sell to other people and uh, sell to the people that are available to assist us. All right, so um, I don't want to continue on too much. Uh, I just want to get some feedback from whoever else uh, is on the call and um, 
want to see who is willing to help to put this together. Um, and uh, it's one of those things where we can just throughout the week, we can work on it little by little. Uh, so that's how I'm able to get things done nowadays is find out who is interested in working on certain things and we work on it. Um, and maybe as time go along, we'll get more of the group uh, members involved. But um, fortunately, uh, people are dealing with their own lives and their own vision for what they're building. But certain things for our community has to be uh, taken care of. Uh, so lights and roads is it, uh, infrastructure. So for those who know how we can get a um, infrastructure grants or we, uh, how we can go about doing corporate economics, uh, this honestly just open to many solutions. And unfortunately, myself is just distracted by the legal stuff that we need to do because I know we need to just get all those things in place as best as possible, including our business bank accounts and you know, adding the new people to our uh, business corporation and uh, making sure that they're effective enough to just get the things that we need to get done. So a lot of things to get done and uh, need more volunteers and more committed people. And it's going to have to come from this people just being open to doing it because a person can no longer just keep on calling and texting and emailing people. Um, but the main thing is I'm thankful for the commitment because right now, uh, out of the 15 acres, we have a name on every single last plot. So it's a good start. And the land has been cleared. It's, we've done so much to it, but um, it's still a whole lot more to be done. And this right now is the time to get volunteers to participate. Uh, that way things will get done more efficient. But uh, regardless of that, uh, I, I'm personally going to do the best I can do and try to find, find people outside of our group uh, to work with us. So before we close, I just want to see if anybody want to give any other feedback or want to talk about anything and then want to confirm with who wants to volunteer or work on any aspects of the, uh, whether it's the road construction or the lights or the grants or any way to get funding or build partnership or get other builders or contractors involved. So all of those things are open. Hi, Bolani. Hello, everybody. I'm Celia. Uh, um, I just you. want... Hi, I just wanted to mention that um, on Fiverr, you can hire grant writers, um, blueprint writers, and they are, they are available for very low prices. Sometimes they start from $10, $15, $50. You know, they have the basic and then they go up to the premium. But they are a lot of Fiverrs that work in Africa, I've seen a lot of Nigerian, um, a lot of people from Nigeria on Fiverr, and I've used Fiverr myself to write um, content writing for me for my website. And um, so I just wanted to put that out there if you haven't checked them out, to check them out, especially for the grant writing, because you can hire a professional grant writer to get the grants written that you need at a very low cost. That's it for me. All right, I appreciate uh, you see for your input. Yes, um, we're familiar with our fiber. So one of the things is uh, before we submit certain things, we need to have some things in place uh, to submit something. Uh, so that's another thing about um, doing um, proposals. So right now we don't have anything to submit to any of the people to even start working on what we're working on. And that's what I'm saying to you, Azebo, that we have to go beyond this, uh, the theory, ideology, and the ideas that we have and put them on paper and expand to them. So it seems like I just have, I'm going to be the one to have to do it. So any input that anyone have, they can send it to me and I can start uh, working on it and building on it to make, uh, make it look as presentable as possible. And it's the same thing when you're dealing with um, grants. Uh, you just literally just have to have those things organized. Uh, so once we get some things organized, um, I can uh, just send it to the fiber site and then I'll see who, you know, who comes our way and uh, try to just go from there. But Azebo, you, um, your line wasn't connecting earlier. I'm not sure how much of what you heard that we uh, said and mentioned. Um, Harry went into details on us being prepared to do in this project. So when you mentioned you talk with the chief and uh, things like that, um, again, even if you're just doing a, a handwritten layout, uh, 
those things have to be put together. But anyway, Azibo, just you can just unmute yourself. Yeah, um, the road is, is primarily is is there. The road is there, but it's it's very rudimentary. It's not it's not really uh, it's not really designed, or it's not really uh, technically put together. It's just to, it's just a road. It's just a road, and uh, uh, the uh, it's, 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 it, the technology has got to be there. It's got to be built. The, the road has to be built. I understand what uh, Brother Carter was saying about the uh, you know they, they have to make sure all of the uh, the uh, the uh, I's are dotted, the T's are crossed. You know that whole thing, but. Uh, the uh, this this mechanical concrete thing is is uh is is a game changer as far as uh, road building is concerned, um, and it's it's not really that complicated. It, it's not really you know you, you well, know the main, you the main thing we need professionals. I see. Well, the main thing even if it's not complicated, we do need professionals and people with experience, and we need. Now, a unit of us to make sure these things are done and organized. So from point A to B or to the next point, um, you know, we just have to have it together. Well, I, I can I, I can put together you up uh, 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 some numbers and proposals, and uh, uh, I can put together uh, uh, the technical part of uh, how the road is supposed to be built. Uh, and, and how in the cost of of materials and labor, that's primarily what what basically what you need, and, and probably an yeah. But we need someone to give us a quote because that is a long road, also. And then whatever input that you get, you can send it to me. I just, as I mentioned, I have to type it up and put it together uh, to where it look like a nice typed up proposal. So any input from you or anybody else, um, I can put it together. That's what we have to do now. Other than that, we'll get stuck at the uh, you know at the beginning phase. Right. right. So uh, I can have I can have have you that I can have that for you uh, within uh, by the by the middle of uh, this week, this coming week. And then the build and the builders uh, we can use to give us an assessment. And if we get a road construction team, um, there's Isis or somebody else out. Uh, I refer them. Um, you know, we can use uh, you know, the information that they they come up with based on their research. So when we compile all of that, that would you know, that would be something that we can kind of move on. So that's uh, where we are, family. Uh, so we'll put together some research um, and put together something on paper that we can share with everyone, and then we can build from there on. But I'll be on standby for people who want to reach out. And um, they just give their input, and we just keep building. But I'm available throughout the week, working on different things. And um, so I usually do my best to try to post updates and give updates. But it's just a lot of work to be done, so the focus has to be doing the work. What's that noise? All right, someone, uh, Mike was uh, open. Uh, you had a question or you had something uh, to share? All right, so family, don't want to keep everybody um, up. So what we can also do is we can post some of our comments and some of our feedback also on the group page. Okay. All right, Azibo, anybody else have anything to share or any last minute words or thoughts before we close out? Uh, did did, did uh, Brother Carter mention anything about his connections to, uh, you know, uh, he said he has some connections with, the, we wanted to establish some connections with some uh, technicians. Uh, yeah. Built, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think he was off, uh, he went offline and um, I was talking about that. Yeah, I've uh, the the house. The, uh, what I did was I spoke to Isaac. Isaac is a builder contractor. He said he got a couple of roads that he's going to be sending away 
we can interview them and have get exposures on the road. As far as beating people, and I haven't got a chance to go into, but that's that is my only one connection right now. I'll try to find the more we, you know, the more I find, I'll constantly keep letting you know. I was I thought you had heard when I I told you when I said it earlier, but I'm gonna stay in contact with you. Yeah, I'm staying in contact, man. You gonna stay in contact, and anything I found out about the contractors and anything, I'll make sure. That they that you're there and you know that way when you get the number we get the numbers I can put the numbers in a, in a PowerPoint presentation we could both go over the PowerPoint presentation together and then we can present it back to Bomani. So, sound like a plan? Yes, sir, definitely. All right. So, but yeah, you're you be hearing from me. That's all I got, fellas. All right, perfect. Uh, in this ch chat, um, all right. All right, I got Kamal. Um, Kamal was saying greetings. He said he's having technical issues, uh, but he want to know, is there a way to see how the main road connects to the Black Star uh, entrance? And that's what I was saying, Azebo, um, things have to be put in, in paper and illustrated that way other members can see and be clear on it. Uh, but right now from the main road, uh, Jahadzi Road, uh, there's there was already a road path that was already uh, paved, not paved, but uh, cleared. But over through, during a period of time from the rain and the erosion, it is not like other than the road. And that's why the road has to be reinforced uh, with something uh, beyond this uh, dirt. Uh, but it's a direct uh, straight connection right there outside of the main office. Um, uh, and then this goes right up to, um, you know, right up to the community. Uh, so, and also I got to get, um, now that Evans has finished with all the surveys, I can get Evans to work with us because he has to reposition a few things from the business center to the community center and where the actual road comes in um, once it gets up to the community. So these are all of the parties that we have involved and um, we'll do my best to get all of them to work together so we can get this part uh, taken care of. We can kind of build momentum on getting it done because this is something that we know we need to get done for, for a while because more and more people are going to be looking to... Let me meet you, your phone is scratchy. More and more people are looking to... More and more people are looking to move, so... This is, a, this is a something that we just got to get done and um, make work. Uh, so once again, family, I'll be on standby for anybody's input and we'll keep on working on building on it. And then uh, we'll just keep each other posted on the group chat and then this personal messages. And then uh, we can resume and um, you know we can even talk back in another week based on whatever research we put together. And then just have another short conference call and we just work it as best as uh, we can. But um Let's put some more energy into it to make it, to make sure it gets done. And then again, for those who are here in America and you can work on different things and uh, you can also get us access to certain things that we need, just reach out anytime, let's have that conversation and whatever I need to do or put together, I'm always open to it. Uh, but uh, all of this just takes a whole lot of team effort. So hopefully once um, we put the uh, video on the uh, group page, hopefully other people can listen to it and um, they'll see who's actually down. But um, I don't want us to uh, stress ourselves about uh, these things, but uh, because it has to be a group energy, and um, I'm gonna always give it my best. Uh, but that's been my limitation. All right, so family, uh, anybody else want to say anything before we close? Aziba, did you have something else uh, that you want to share before we close? All right, let me unmute you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, I, I just would like to add that uh, w w I have connections here in the, in the local area, you know, uh, but, you know, as a backup, if, 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 if everything, if, if things are not successful as far as uh, the connections to be made for reputable people, you know, there's there's a way that we could we could do this. We have a, have to have a plan A and a plan B, you know. Um, 
Oh, you, I mentioned somebody mentioned grant writing or something like that. The funding uh, that that's, that might be needed for to to buy the materials and equipment needed to do the road. Well, yeah, what I was I, saying is that we have we have many options, but when you try, when you try to deal with uh, serious grant writers and business people, you have to have yourself organized to a T. Um, and that's what I'm trying to make sure the attorney gets what he needs to get done for us. And then uh, we have to start writing in detail uh, presentations and proposals. Uh, everything has to be put on paper and illustrated and organized with uh, you know, great fine tuned research. Right. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. So all the inputs can be sent to me and I'll put it together. Okay. Uh, like right now, I'm looking at a draft of um, a business plan for uh, mechanical con concrete from Purdue University. So it's just things like that that's um that's even organized, but you just have to use some of their details. Okay. So you know, basically, you have to put together all of our energy. Um, different people have different skills and different uh, resources that they can bring to the table, and that's all I'm talking about. I see my mom's gonna meet you. Um, your line just has bad feedback. But nevertheless, family, I appreciate everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us on this emergency conference call so we can uh, just give some updates on our surveys, which are all completed. And then also our uh, title and deed and registration uh, to the Lands Commission with our uh, new attorney. So we'll be keeping everyone posted on that as we work towards that. Uh, but at this moment also, want to make sure that uh, we take care of the business that needs to be taken care of. So Everyone can have a smoother access to getting to their land and doing their work. Uh, so everyone, uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and uh, I'll keep everybody posted. And uh, for those who haven't seen any of the updates uh, for the land, I usually just try to my best to just record videos when we travel there and post. And then Azebo has his videos also on his channel. So together, by us updating these videos, uh, we're just you know we're bringing a popular energy to Jihadzi because the goal of what we're doing is to encourage other people to come to the town and you know, they can get their land separate, but ultimately um, work together. And some people can also join us on the 60 acres, but looking forward to be a union of us uh, to build that whole town. Uh, you know, we're in a good situation where we have a nice town that's very quiet and it's, um, it's not like it's a very dense populated um, area. Uh, which is a good thing because we have a lot of people that want to move from America to Africa. So this is an ideal area. So on that note, family, everyone take care and uh, we'll keep in touch. Keep up the good work, y'all. Yeah. I appreciate your sister. And thank you for yeah. the update, Romani. Uh, you're welcome, um, uh, yeah. Dr. Austin. And appreciate everybody for joining us at the last minute and uh, giving their input. And we're going to keep it uh, going.